So today I'm going to tell you something about energy and uh, how we can get it from the sun. What solar technologies are available to us right now? Solar thermal is great to heat water, but it's less great if you want to use the hot water than to generate electricity. The other up and coming area that's still very much in the research phase is this solar fuel. So photovoltaics changes sunlight into electricity, that's fine for a lot of applications, but in many applications that we still have today need, requires a fuel. Uh, in fact, this is a, a laboratory-based uh, device that can convert sunlight, directly use that energy to split water into uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Solar fuels is definitely a very important research area. So at the moment, uh, we can make hydrogen from sunlight. But you know, hydrogen is perhaps not so convenient to transport and store, so actually we probably want a, a higher density or a, a, a more a, a higher structure fuel, uh, you know, like maybe me methanol or ethanol. There is currently processes to produce that. Um, they're less efficient and usually not directly from sunlight. Solar cells. At the moment, it's most likely going to be a silic made of silicon, so crystalline silicon solar cells. Other commercially available solar cells are these gallium arsenide or multi-junction solar cells. These are more efficient, uh, but uh, more expensive. What's also available are less efficient thin film. And then the other uh, emerging technologies are polymer solar cells, perovskite solar cells, and quantum dot solar cells. Now, silicon solar cells. Now, silicon is a common element. It comes from silicon dioxide. It's from sand, so it should be cheap. And it is cheap, but in terms of energy, it's probably not so cheap. It requires many, many processes to get up to level of purity required for a silicon solar cell to operate efficiently. Let's talk about thin film uh, cells. So these thinner devices are thin enough now that you can have flexible or conformal devices, but it does come at a, a, a efficiency cost. Uh, these thin film solar cells are not as efficient as the silicon solar cells. There's also uh, these emerging technologies, uh, which all are thin film based devices. We need to make use of all technologies available to us. So at the moment, uh, at least for solar cells, um, we can convert uh, sunlight easily into electricity um, and we're using silicon solar cells so that's going to be with us for a long time. And then with all the emerging technologies that are coming along, thin film solar cells, organic solar cells, uh, perovskite solar cells, solar concentrators, we need to use all of them for different types of applications. So this particular slide shows you what is involved in a printed solar cell and an organic one. The active layer material for an organic solar cell is, are these compounds here. So these can be dissolved in solution, make it into an ink, which can be printed row to row. So organic semiconductors, what are they? Organic molecules, we have carbon-carbon bonds. These bonds involve I guess sharing of electrons between two carbon atoms. In a typical organic molecule, these electrons wouldn't move too far from this area between the two carbon atoms. So most organic compounds are insulators. For an organic semiconductor, imagine a benzene ring. In a benzene ring, you have two types of bonding. One type of bonding is this pi bonding. The pi bonding allows the electrons to move freely over this benzene molecule. If I was to string a few benzene molecules together and make a molecule like this called pentacene, you can now imagine perhaps that the electrons can move freely around this whole molecule because of this pi bonding. What's more is if you were to make a, have a crystal of pentacene where uh, there is ordered packing of these molecules. The electrons in these pi bonds can then hop between the molecules. So then you can get some sort of electron conduction and therefore a semiconducting material. And I just want to quickly talk about a, uh, uh, this particular solar cell technology. This particular material, this perovskite, uh, in the last few years has really be become the most interesting solar cell material 
it's solution processable, usually you can print it, but it's device efficiency. Currently, the lab-based device record is 25%, so that's matching that of silicon in the lab. We want large-scale usage, so in solar farms would be great. One particular technology we make use of is to combine a light harvesting device with a silicon solar cell to make it more efficient. So if you already have a solar farm, with silicon solar panels, and if you could just simply put a film of this other material to collect more light, then that, that would be great. So what are excitons? Excitons are created when light is absorbed by a material. The very simplest picture is, if you imagine an atom, it's got electrons moving around a nucleus with a certain energy. If light is absorbed, then the electrons pick up more energy. And in this state where the electron has more energy, but still somehow associated with the nucleus, then that's an exciton. And what can we do with that? So after absorption of light, what can we do with it? Well, we can absorb light and convert the light into electrical current. So that's when ex an exciton is uh, split into the electron and the positive charge. Okay, that's the solar cell. But actually, I guess more often than not, when, a light, when light is absorbed by a material, we get heating of the material, or we're vibrations are produced. The other thing that can happen is uh, we can get uh, emission of the energy, so that's fluorescence. You can also inject charges into materials, into a semiconducting material, and if these charges recombine, you can get an exciton, and then the exciton can emit light. Other than using emerging technologies in large-scale applications, it can also be used in smaller applications, so uh, some of these newer technologies, particularly I would say these luminescent solar concentrators, are much more suited to urban environments. They can harvest low levels of, uh, low levels of sunlight more efficiently. Um, they're colorful, so people would like, more likely to have them on buildings. So, you know, we could have facades of buildings that are collecting energy. In my research, in, this, in, in the research of the Exoton Science Center, we're also interested in looking at this particular light harvesting device, so-called luminescent solar concentrator. It's just a fluorescent dye dispersed in a plastic matrix. The fluorescent dye absorbs light. The emission from these fluorescent dye is trapped inside the plastic matrix by total internal reflection. The emission then is channeled to the ed edges. On the edges is where you can then attach perhaps solar cells to convert the emission into electrical current. It's less bulky, it doesn't require cooling. It's more interesting for applications where you want to integrate these devices with something. We've built some demonstrators at the University of Melbourne. These devices work well under low and diffuse light. And we've also made a A0 size device and uh, certainly under full sun, it's outputting 7.7 you know, .7 volts and 55 milliamps. So it's definitely, you can charge mobile phones with that soft power. So what is the ultimate light harvesting device? It could be organic solar cells um, that has one day energy payback time. Or it could be these perovskite solar cells that are solar showing great efficiency, they're solution processable. It may be solar fuel devices where we convert sunlight directly into liquid fuels. I think that's an important challenge. But I think we need to uh, think about all renewable energy technologies, and it's definitely going to play an important role in our future energy mix. When can we uh, stop relying on fossil fuels? Uh, I think um, very soon. Once energy costs is high enough uh, and uh, you know, the, the solar technologies are low cost enough, then it will just switch. Of course, with uh, government policy and incentives, that is going to accelerate things a little bit more, but uh, we're running out of fossil fuels. That's only going to get more expensive. So if we have cheaper renewable energy, and people would take it up.